One, two, three, four, five. Head to head comparisons. Cheap kids walkie talkies over 30 years. Here's a Minicom sold by Dick Smith Electronics around 1982. It's 27 meg AM, operating on 27.145 megahertz. These cost about $7 or $3.50 each. And they're a complete 4 transistor transceiver in each unit. The remainder of this video will give them a test and compare them with some older radios. Reading the packet is quite entertaining. You can apparently send something called Morse code. However, that switch was not on the unit. They claim a range up to 100 metres. That I'll test in a moment. First thing I had to do was to establish what frequency the radios transmit on. I've got the FT817 set up. I turn on the receiver and note that it radiates. There's an S9 noise. That's the super regenerative receiver in the walkie-talkie. So I'll turn around and try and find a peak. Forty six megahertz, forty five, forty four, forty three, forty two. We're getting closer. Forty one, forty. It seems to be around forty or forty one megahertz as it's dropped off. Next, I'll transmit and see if I can find the signal. I'm listening in AM mode. One, two, three. OK, I found it around 40.65. Now, what's this? There's some drift. Now we're around 40.7. About uh, 30 or 40 millimetres away and it's up to 40.730 uh, in fact so 40.735 an AM transmitter that drifts 30 or 40 kilohertz is certainly no good for listening on reasonable quality equipment that's unless you're using a super regenerative receiver you turn the thing on and it hisses no doubt a super regen receiver that has a much wider bandwidth so even if it drifts 100 kilohertz, it would still be receivable. An example of how taking a shortcut with the transmitter and allowing a cut price receiver actually produces better results than if you're receiving on a nicer bit of equipment. I'll put one on the ledge and see how far the other will transmit to it. I'll leave the camera near the receiver. Unfortunately, I didn't allow for the fact that when you stand them up, they fall. So, we'll just have to have the antenna horizontal. Four step, five step, six step, seven step, eight step, nine step, ten step. This is ten steps, ten steps about seven metres away. Eleven step, twelve step, thirteen step, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. About fifteen metres away, twenty-one. A range of around 20 metres. You could almost shout better than that. The next test is to use a better receiver, the FT817, with a magnetic loop. These walkie-talkies normally use about 40.66 megahertz. 
that's a noisy frequency as you can probably hear. Inside looks to be a conventional circuit board, 1980s technology. The speaker doubles as the microphone. Looks like there's five transistors. No crystals, that's why it's so unstable. There's just one tuned circuit, that's for the receiver front end as well as the transmitter. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if the transmitter is the same transistor as the receiver. I'm guessing a one transistor transmitter, the other transistors are probably just used for the receiver. You'd need at least a one transistor super regen detector, maybe three transistors for the audio. Given the amount of radiation this receiver puts out, I doubt there's any RF preamp. There's an RF choke here in series with the antenna. I'm not sure if that's intended to provide some base loading. Although I have seen RF chokes in series with antennas on things like cordless phones. And one of their functions is to keep the transmitted power down. So I'm not sure of the function of this. The resistors are quite small. Um, only about 3 or 4 millimeters long. Maybe 8th of a watt, something like that. On off switch on this side, push to talk on the other. Looking at the back of the board, that's got quite a lot of contacts. That's probably the most complicated part of this rig, actually switching between transmit and receive. The antenna though appears to have no switching that's connected to the coil, possibly via a secondary or, or primary winding. Overall, very cheap and nasty design as reflected by its performance. The Pocket Com achieved a range of over 100 metres. These barely manage 10, maybe 20 if you're lucky. The other thing is the Pocket Com had good transmit audio clarity and excellent frequency stability, being crystal controlled. These were much less stable and had much worse modulation. So the moral is if you want a cheap walkie talkie, you're better off getting a second hand Pocket Com like this than bothering with a cheapie available today. Even if they were the same price, the Pocket Com is much better value.